If you have discipline, you will attain freedom. Train, study, work, practice. Train, study, work, practice. Train, study, work, practice. Standing there lost and not doing anything is just waiting to die, waiting to starve to death. Don't let that happen. Your excuses will destroy you and take everything that you ever wanted from you if you let them. When your excuses make you feel a little bit better about the fact that you didn't execute on what you needed to execute on, then they can make you feel better, but they're not helping you. If you want freedom in your life, you have to have discipline. Start now. Go do something that's hard. Go try and accomplish something that's hard. You may win, you may lose, you may succeed, you may fail. I'll tell you what, you'll be better. If you don't accept that challenge, if you don't step up and step into that cold water, this is not a good move. Don't do that. Don't do that, just get up. Move towards that challenge, whatever that challenge is. Move towards that challenge and go attack it. You have to start moving forward. You have to tar start taking steps in order to improve your vision, improve your perspective, change your perspective, make some kind of progress. And worst case scenario, you figure out that you walked the wrong direction. Okay, now you can go walk in the other direction. You, what you learn to do is, okay, I'm gonna go forward, I'm not gonna quit, so I'm gonna go forward, bring it on. And I think if there's anything that you learn, it's to keep pushing through things that suck. So if you lack the discipline to exercise and eat healthy, you will end up being a slave to disease. If you lack the discipline to work hard, save your money, you will end up a slave to finances. If you lack the discipline to manage your time correctly, you will end up with no free time. If you have self-discipline, if you have the discipline to save your money and work hard and invest your money properly, if you have the discipline to manage your time correctly and not waste a bunch of time, if you have the discipline to exercise and eat healthy, you will end up with freedom. You've gotta be aggressive to make things happen. I mean, if, you don't, if you're not aggressive with things, they don't happen, they don't move. So you're always learning and growing, and, and I was always learning until the day I retired. And people can actually confront the fact that this is all because of me, and this is, it hurts, but is also unbelievably empowering, because if these problems are because of me, then I'm capable of fixing these problems. So even though extreme ownership hurts and is painful, it's also liberating because now you have control over your fate and over your destiny, and that is a glorious thing. I'm not saying take your emotions out of the calculus, but they have to be one component of your calculus, not the whole equation. The equation has to include emotions, yes. Logic, yes. Future, yes. Goals, yes. Family, yes. Work, yes. Finances, yes. All those things have to be in the calculus. Emotions has to be a part of the, that calculus. You can't pull them out of there or they'll bite you. But you can't make them the overwhelming denominator of everything that you do or it's gonna be problematic. Extreme ownership is this went wrong, this failed, didn't accomplish this, and it's not the fault of my boss, it's not the fault of my girlfriend, it's not the fault of my parents, it's not the fault of the weather, it's my fault. And I'm gonna take ownership of it and I'm gonna fix it. That's what extreme ownership is. And this is a very difficult thing to do because it hurts. Because when you look around at your life and you look around at your job and your financial situation and your relationship and your physical health, and when you look at all those things and all the problems that you may have with those things, and you say, the reason I have all those problems is because of me, that can hurt, that can sting. And a lot of times our ego rejects that and makes excuses and lies. And then 
We don't have to change anything. And then nothing changes. So again, I would love to be able to, you know, give you this profound anchor that people need to have. But it's like, oh, do, do you want to do this or not? Which is what I think a lot of it boils down to. Do you actually want to do this or not? Do you actually want to do this or not? Because if you actually want to do it, what's going to stop you? Nothing. And if you don't really want to do it, what's going to stop you? Just about anything that comes up. Just about any obstacle that gets in your way becomes an excuse. It becomes a reason. It becomes a rationale for not proceeding down that path. If I want to have influence over you, what do I have to do? I actually have to allow you to influence me. How do I get you to trust me? I have to put trust in you. The, one of the worst situations you can be in is when you think that the little moves that you're making, no one can see them. Mm -hmm. and, and it's so obvious to everybody else. Everybody else that's watching can see exactly what you're doing. You think, oh, they can't, they can't see the maneuvers that I'm making to take care of myself. No, they see, everybody sees, and it ends up destroying you. I have to open my mind up and allow you to influence me. If I just stick with my own ideas, you're, you're, you close your mind as well. If I have a closed you mind, you're gonna you close bet. my mind. Um, if I want you to care about me, what do I have to do? I have to care about you. Mm -hmm. And by the way, in my opinion, these are the components of a relationship. Right? Yes, yes, if, definitely. If we listen to each other, we have, if we don't listen to each other, we don't have a relationship. Yeah. If we don't respect each other, we don't have a relationship. If we're not influenced by each other, we don't have a relationship. So if we don't care about each other, obviously we don't have a relationship. So when you want to build a relationship, what do you have to do? You have to listen to the other person. Mm -hmm. By the way, this applies to your employees. It applies to your kids. Mm -hmm. It applies to your, your spouse. It applies to everyone. If you want them to listen to you, you have to listen to them. And you, you can't just, you know, I'll stop talking as I prepare my counter for what you're saying right now. It's like, I'm literally gonna listen to what you have to mm -hmm. say and try and open up my mind and open up my perspective so that I understand your world as, as well as I possibly can. I'm gonna integrate that into what my thoughts are and we're gonna come to an understanding. We're gonna move forward with a better solution. So the idea of barking orders, the military or any organization can be run through authoritarian dictatorship. Look, you can make it work for a little while but it's not a long-term mm -hmm. solution, and that's what you gotta watch out for.